Okay, this should blow your mind. It does mine. This is like a, an anchor. And these are like the grabbers that grab. You see them all around here? And then this is like red flesh underneath it. And this is the strap that runs in and locks in. Well, this is the same exact same thing. <laughs> it's not quite as big. Oh, 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 damn thing's pretty heavy. Now, uh, let me get settled here and I'll show you mine. Hold on. All right, let's start with the strap coming in, which is here. And then it flares out into this big pad here. All right, now and the same thing happens there. You see the strap coming in and the big pad. Then those little lock-ins on the, on the edges here, these little claws. We have the same thing here. Oh, you see those claws? Same exact same thing. And you see all the red looking stuff here? Same as that red looking stuff around there. If you, whoops. Same as that red stuff there. Alright, it's the same structure. This is obviously much smaller. And this was what locked it in as an anchor. And that strap ran out to pull against whatever it pulled against. See the strap coming out here? Locked it right in. Those are those little anchor teeth. Basically the same as what you see there. Alright, I showed you that huge, wherever it is I don't know, but it's this exact same thing that's the big latch with all those claws and, and it's the circle and the strap coming out of it. I don't know where that's from. I pe People send me things all the time. They, what, what about this? Tell me about that. I, and this is what I do. I try to figure out what they're sending me. Now, what it was, was a tendon enthesis, which is what this is. This is the development phase of the tendon, the insertion, the, the, you know, how it grips in and so forth. Now, as it develops, you get to this phase here, which is these crystals are actually what's embedded here. All this red stuff is this red stuff all around that surrounds those lock-ins. This strap, this is really not anatomically exact for this particular case. This is a flat attachment. All right, the strap runs flat along. It doesn't stick straight out. Some of them do. Some of them stick straight out like that, and they break, and then they have that little round, they have a little circle where it, it attached. This is not that way. This is laying flat, and it breaks at another abrupt transition, which is right here. You see? They show it goes from this, then to that, and then to this. Well, this is right there. That's where it broke. All right, that came out and locked right into this this whatever it was. <laughs> that, this is some kind of, looks like kaolin clay, kaolin clay, which would be surface skin area. And usually it's normally, when you see this, this kind of stuff, it's normally in the facial skin and the soft skins. But, you know, we're talking about giant creatures, so as possible, but this is, I, I could tell, this is skin, that, that right there, that brown stuff, maybe I should put it in the scope, or maybe not, we'll see. Alright, I'm going to take a look with the microscope here, we're going to be looking at some of the surface and so forth, and some of this red bloody looking stuff in the teeth, so, and, and it's going to be up here, and I have to keep the lights down, but, alright, this, I'm doing this handheld, so there's no stability here. <laughs> I'm unstable. Now, you see these little black balls and that white looking, that skin really. And those are the interstitial balls. And you see now some of the skin has eroded and we're getting down into the, really the like bloody subsurface. You see all those little black balls? Those are the interstitial. And that's, that's that brown spot. Now, let's go down to where the yellow stuff is. Just right here. This is all, this is all blood. 
You see the yellow and the red. You see those little white strappy looking things. Those are tendinous fibers that are all in here. Now this is at the abrupt transition. Let's see what we can see here. I haven't looked at this. This should be interesting. Alright, let me come up a little bit higher. Alright, so here we come down from the brown stuff. Alright, and we're going away and down towards the strap. Towards Now is right there is the abrupt transition along that little curved line over to the right. And hanging over the side, that's just a continuation of where the strap would have been. But this is all skin and tendon. Alright, this is the the um, big grabby thing that I showed you before. And that is the red blood. And this is where the tendon came up and attached. Alright, and now we're getting into, the, this is all red blood. And we'll start to get into way up here is where the skin is still intact. See these little, little black balls? You see them everywhere, these little black balls? Those are the interstitch. And this still has a little bit of skin left to it. Hold on. Let's see if I can focus in on that. This is still a little bit of the surface skin left. But right below that is where the, well, it's not really the surface skin, but it's just above the interstitium. You know, the surface skin is completely gone. Uh, and then you get down below this layer of membrane, and you're into the, the balls, which is the interstitium. And that's what this is all about. This is, a, this is an anchor. Right, it's an enthesis. It means it anchors this tendon in place. And that's what all this stuff is about. Alright, remember I showed you those little grippy teeth? I'm going to rock this to the side. This is the grippy tooth right here that hangs down. Look at how deep this cavity goes over here. <laughs> See way down in there? And if I can come over here, you're going to see a lot of little hairy looking stuff, but it, there's actually blood way, way, way down inside there. I mean, this is way deep inside. Now that just looks, I'm sure that's just dust. But you can see the actual artery over there where artery blood came back. And now we're going to come back to this tooth. This is the, this is the anchor right here, that little grabby spot. I got to focus in. I got to come way back out. And here it is. That's that, that's that tooth. And on the other side, it has the same thing. You go way back down inside here. You see it? And then there'll be another one, and then there'll be another one, and another one. All these little balls are the anchors. That's what I was just looking at right there. All right, which is the same thing as that, only the strap is laying sideways. All right, these are the balls. They're the same as this ball right here. And then they have that little strap running out, which goes to somewhere so that you can pull against that anchor. This is just nothing more than a big locked-in anchor, and I mean they are tighter than hell. That's why these straps break. Now, this is not necessarily accurate. In the flesh, in this, in this kind of, this, these clay-looking areas, that's not bone and it's not deep inside these things, ligaments and tendons and muscle, you know, it, it's in muscle, yes, and it's laying flat in there. So these straps are not sticking straight up, it's laying flat going out this way. That's the only difference basically, and of course this thing is absolutely enormous. These things in us, you, you, need, you need a microscope to see this, and a good one at that, no cheap one. You know, I'm just getting ready to post this particular video, and this pops up. Scientists invented a simple four-minute test for creativity, and you can try it out. 
So what they're trying to find out is how creative you are. And what does creative mean? I mean, what does creative mean? It's says psychologists think that more creative people are able to link remote elements together in their minds more easily, which is what's being tested here. So can you take biology and link it with chemistry and history and all that? To me, that's what they're talking about. Now, it says creativity is fundamental to human life said Olson in a statement, the more we understand its complexity, the better we can foster creativity in all its forms. Well, let me show you something about all of these researchers and PhDs and so forth. That really is the problem, and it's peer review. It has nothing to do with creativity. It's how you can repeat what you're told to say. I'm going to give you an example. It's going to absolutely flip your mind off. And I guarantee you it's true. I mean, how much truth do we want? Do we really want truth? If you do, you have to start engaging in these things that I've been showing. I even showed this to a PhD psychologist, runs a practice, teaches the whole nine yards, saw it, realized what it was, and still refused and called me deluded for trying to bring this forward. And I said, how could you call me deluded? And this person said, well, you're the one that's deluded. We're just wrong. <laughs> I said, what? You're obviously deluded if you can't, you know, it's, this person is a PhD, perfectly happy deluded. I said, I'll tell you, it's unbelievable. They could just dismiss all this stuff and continue to teach what they're teaching. If I was a student, I would. I think I would ask for my money back. I, and I, I think they should be able to get it. You know, so certainly for history and for archaeology and um, physics, too. If they, they refuse to look at that, too. And we've accelerated light. We've split them. We've shown them muons, electron neutrinos, all that stuff. So right now... Academia is is in just absolute refusal mode, and they have always been that way. But now the evidence is so overwhelming, they're just beginning to look like extremely incompetent or fraudulent. I guess you'd have to say. You know, if your job is to examine what is scientific in reality, and you're presented with material evidence and refuse to examine it, I, I, I don't know, explain to me what that consists of. I mean, everybody's seen my mud fossils, and I extracted them. I extracted DNA from them, or blood, actually, almost raw blood. And I did it with all the precautions and everything else. I didn't contaminate it. Plus, it was received, and it was dense and excellent quality. And Helix Biolabs did a fabulous job, and they stand behind the result. Just as long as you understand, I extracted the samples. I could have faked it, but I didn't. And you can see the stuff that I sent. And it was very well done, and it wasn't cheap. And there was three samples, and they're all tested for um, mitochondrial DNA. And here it is right here. Excellent quality DNA sequence obtained from that 36-inch tip and the lung. I, I don't know if I think I showed you the lung, or I will. And, and it went through all this stuff, and it was homo sapien, mitochondrial, B gene, and D-loop region. And that's all I had to test it for, was to prove that it was human. And this was a test done, oh, I don't know, six, seven years ago. Back in, uh, I think it was 2015. Hold on. Same time I had all those CAT scans done. Yeah, summer of 2015. It was the summer of 2015. Now, one of them came off of this, and I've shown again hundreds of times, literally hundreds of times. That is the fingernail, blood supply. This pad right here goes between the phones so they don't scrub each other and scrape. I broke this piece off right here, which laid right up against the fingernail. And it actually has the fingerprints on it. And down deep inside, I went down and extracted the blood. And here is that stuff. All right, here's the fingerprints right here. Look at that. That's the fingerprints. These are sweat pores. My finger, uh, my thumb, is about the same width as, as one ridge, one of the ridges in your fingers. This 
pad up at the top is what this is. This popped right off of there. It was almost like it was glued. It didn't come off in all scraggly looking. It just popped off. Well, here it is here. Hold on a second. This is the this is where the fingerprint part is. This is what the back part is like. It just was almost like laying there, just like this. Bang! It popped off. This is where the fingernail was, right here. This popped right off. These are the fingerprints. I still have the sweat pores and everything, and it's just like just laying on top there. And it's thick, and it is tough. Tough, tough, tough. Now, um, so this is all DNA tested, CAT scan, well, didn't, that's not CAT scan, the, um, from the other two things that I had were CAT scan. One of them was this lung here, hold on. This was a lung. Now, I'm saying these things were killed in a great flood. And it, 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 exactly what Velikovsky recorded, that everywhere on Earth they said there was a great hot water flood and it killed virtually all the creatures on earth almost only the ones that could hide out in the tops of the mountains because we almost got impacted by venus that's a whole nother story but you see how flat that is and they're all like that and what happened was in this boiling water flesh turned into mud and what you had left over was the organs and some tendons and so forth and sometimes you get a, a whole creature's body like this is a goose. All right. Now, it's just the way it was. Sometimes they come out as bones, but they'd still be turned to stone. All right. Well, the organs preserve very, very well. So, and, and toes and, and fingers did real well too, because they're saturated with blood. But sometimes you get nice chunks of meat. You know, they still have all the fascia on them. And that little latch that latches a, a chunk of meat to the next chunk of meat. A lot to think about, my friends. This is Giants, DNA tested. Some of the stuff is CAT scan. One of the fingers from my other Giant. Hold on, let me show you that one. I'll show you the hand from it. This is the hand right here. Alright, that's a left hand. The thumb goes off this way. The cleave right here is right there. Right between your, these two parts of your hand. It's only right up to about there. Alright, now, that right there is a tendon that runs down. And this is what it was. This is the grip skin from this hand. I showed you the grip skin from the other, it just peels right off. This peels off the same way. It's rugged, tough, they call it grip skin, friction skin. There's some other exotic names for it, but that's good enough. These are the things that are your fingers, your toes, your feet, your hands. They are the things that scrub and do work against the rest of the world. And they easily, after this flood, they petrified in a manner where they just peel right off. They're just not even hardly adhered. You could really just go right there and peel this stuff right off. 